Episode 62 of the Digimon Adventure Reboot series gave us the debut of a well-known fusion Digimon from Zero Two, basically putting the final nail in the coffin that 2020 Adventure is getting any kind of Zero Two moment or follow-up, you know, with a time skip that introduces Cody or Armadillamon, Davis, any of that group. But it's not the only big news of the week. We also have a look at the Digimon that is apparently going to be the final threat, the Great Catastrophe itself, via a preview in Japan's V-Jump magazine. We'll talk more about that reveal in the back half of the video, but first we'll do our episode 62 review discussion. Welcome to the Digino where we talk all things Digimon every Sunday. I always feel weird doing the like and subscribe stuff because it's such a cliche on YouTube, but you know, in my last video I asked that if you watched at least three Digino videos and haven't subscribed yet, you do me the favor and consider subscribing. And it was an incredible week for me with over 500 subscriptions. So thank you so much, honestly, and please consider subscribing if you haven't. Okay, episode 62. This is seemingly our last Sora-centric episode and our second last stage in this crest quest setup since next week is finally going to be about Tai getting his crest and the episode is called the crest of courage which is a pretty great title for an episode but this week we find Sora lending a helping hand to this new village occupied with all of the friends Sora has made in her episodes including Junkmon, Naemon, Pomamon, and more. Immediately I thought this was a great thing to have leading up into the catastrophe because not only is it a reminder of all the small adventures up until now but it's also visually showing us that the kids have something worth fighting for now something worth saving as it relates to stopping the great catastrophe it's not just a mysterious fantasy world to them anymore it's not a game sora knows these guys they're friends it's also early in the episode when sora gives us this fantastic line saying that maybe the chosen children aren't just meant to fight so while attempting to expand the land and farming operation we unearth shakoman who in previous canon is is, of course, the DNA digivolution of TK and Cody's champion Digimon in Zero Two. Here, Shakoman has a completely different backstory, which unfortunately spells trouble for the possibility of a Zero Two reboot in this current canon. Yes, there is that movie teased still coming, but it'll likely be back in the original canon because I just don't see a world where two main protagonists would have their Digimon DNA digivolve into a character we've already met in the series timeline. Not to mention things like Pegasusmon showing up already without a Digimental armor Digi. Egg. It's just really not looking good for Digimon Adventure 2020 having a Digimon Adventure 2022, and I think it's time we pack it up as it relates to that particular theory that that story is coming. We come to learn that Shakomon was an ancient defender of this land, a so-called benevolent Digimon, but it's just blasting laser beams out violently, and this is because in its mind, it's still fighting off the demons from the past that once invaded. Sora travels underground, embraces a miniature Shakomon, and has this flashback slash empathy scenario where she feels Shakomon pain and witnesses its friends Cupimon sacrifice themselves to end the battle. In this scene, they also transform into a feather that looks a lot like the falling feather effect from the beginning of the series whenever TK and Kari would interact with their angel Digimon before meeting. I'm wondering if that was supposed to be a clue about how they met their angel Digimon, or if that was just coincidence that those two animations looked so similar. I was a little disappointed that this ancient battle was not related to the already established ancient war that involved Millenniumon and Lopmon and our Digimon. It was just a different ancient battle, which I felt was a missed opportunity. I don't ever want to be the guy who knocks points because the show's story doesn't align perfectly with the story I had written in my head, but I had really hoped that perhaps this Shakamon was a member of the Holy Digimon's team who was forgotten about, left behind, who got a raw deal, and perhaps remembers were Greymon and Phoenixmon since they fought in that battle, and kind of has to come to terms with the events of that war in this episode. Instead, this is a character that none of our characters have ever met, so besides Sora getting that empathy the flashback sequence, nobody really knows him. We don't have an investment into Shakomon. We do get an awesome moment though where Garudamon blocks War Greymon's Gaia Force attack. It was like a five second Garudamon versus War Greymon, and Sora has Taichi stand down, insisting that they're going to save Shakomon. Garudamon goes to Phoenixmon and sort of through a vague strategy involving holy mega power and having the Cupimon rise up out of the ground, Shakomon tears start flowing and it settles down. I had a bit of a hard time understanding this scene or feeling an emotional response to this. I think it didn't trigger the response the writers were hoping this would, for me at least, but maybe, I don't know, I was just tired. Let me know for sure in the comments if you thought this was like a beautiful scene, but for me it did very little. When things settle down, Sora reminds Taichi of what she said at the start of the episode. Again, a great 
line and character moment saying that the chosen ones aren't just meant to fight. She also affirms what I said at the top of this review, that she has to leave the village because she has something to fight for, she needs to help stop the great catastrophe for these guys to continue being happy. Overall, I wasn't over the moon with this episode, I did think it gave Sora some good moments going into the final stretch of episodes because she's been severely underwritten in this series, but the two things coming out of this episode, giving Sora something worth fighting for, and recognizing that the Chosen Children are more than just glorified boxing coaches for their Digimon, those were really great touches. I wish Shakamon's Ancient War and our Ancient War were related, but what can you do? Let me know if you would have liked that to happen too, or if you think I'm like being too critical or tunnel visioned in thinking these two events were going to be related in some way. But as I said at the start of the video, the episode is not the only thing we need to discuss, and I'd like to show you the new enemy Digimon featured in the Fuji TV animation page of V Jump's latest magazine in the Digimon section. Spoiler countdown as we may be looking at the final boss of Digimon Adventure 2020. So, five, four, three, two, one. Spoiler time, this is Negamon, and it appears to be the boss that Argomon is working for. Possibly some evolved form of the little eyeball Digimon we've seen a handful of times. The design itself is really strong in my opinion, reminding me of horrifying things like the Imprisoned from The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. But what I will say on the negative side is that I'm going to be pretty disappointed if the final villain of Digimon 2020 is just another mindless or close to mindless giant destruction beast like Millenniummon was. I really badly wanted a villain with a plan and a goal that is more complicated than consume the digital world or consume the human world or both whatever it ends up being but both Millenniummon and possibly negamon we're looking at these mindless monsters and that's fine it can lead to some cool action scenes but i'd much rather have a more anthropomorphic villain maybe a human villain with a plan or a human shaped digimon villain that looks like a maybe a rival to omegamon but we'll just have to wait and see right because for all i know this is the final final form that comes after a really intelligent anthropomorphic Morphic villain with a brilliant plan. Like maybe there is the Ganondorf Gerudo form and this is the Beast Ganon or even Calamity Ganon that comes after we beat the intelligent first form. I don't know, I'm just speculating now so I'll I'll stop here. But let me know in the comments what do you think about this big bad Digimon after Millenniummon? Were you hoping for more in the realm of plot or are you just thinking hey this thing looks creepy as hell, it's huge, it's gonna be cool seeing our Mega Digimon take it down. That's gonna be all for this week. If you made it this far and you liked the video please hit like subscribe if you haven't already friendly reminder that Leomon has survived another week so Leomon keep it up only four weeks to go you can do this and to everyone watching thanks for hanging out take care and I'll see you in the next video